Hello. So we've talked about linear time invariant systems and we've talked about some specific signals. And one of the strange things that we talked about was the fact that uh, we can take a signal x and we can write it as a sum of the individual samples where n minus k is the impulse function and uh, x of k would be the weight at that point. In other words, we've just broken it down to a sum of all the individual samples that make up that signal. Okay, so we'll keep that in hand and also let's look at uh, a linear time invariant system setup where we have x as the input into that system. The system does some operation and we have y as the output. And for starters, we're going to look at a particular x. We'll get back to the one over there on the right in just a moment. The particular x at the input is going to be just the unit impulse. And uh, the output is going to be h of n. So since it's linear and time invariant, uh, we know that we could put in an impulse, we're going to get an output, and it'll be the same every time. Every time we put in the impulse, we'll get the output out. If we delay the input impulse by a little while, we'll just delay the output. If we doubled the impulse, we're going to get double the output. I haven't told you what the system is, so we don't know what H is, but we can feel pretty confident that when we put that signal in, we will always get the same output. So, let's build on that. Um, suppose we now take, we go back to looking at our x, and we've decided to break it down like this. So, if we operate our system, LTI system operates on x, that will be the same as the LTI system operating on this version of x. Now, because our system is linear, we know that we can uh, wait and add inputs, put them through the system, or we can put each of the inputs through a system, wait, and then add the outputs, and we get the same thing. Another way of visualizing this is a linear system will pass right through a sum. Okay, furthermore, Our linear system is operating on functions of n. Well, look at this. x of k is no longer a function of n. It's just a scalar as far as the system is concerned. So, once again, invoking linearity, that comes out. x of k, and now our system is operating on the delta. So those two steps are due to linearity. Now we've already defined what happens when the system operates on a delta uh, function it's going to give us an h of n but in this case we've delayed the input, so the output is going to be delayed. And so that's where time invariance comes to our rescue in giving us this output. All right, so let's write down this function nice and simplified as we've worked it out. This is going to be equal to the sum over k of x of k times h n minus k.
this should not be a new unexpected response. But this is my favorite way of developing it. I think it looks really elegant. All we do is a straightforward application of linearity and time invariance and we get that. Now, as you recall, there's another way we can write this. We can say that y of n, which is our output, is equal to x of n convolved with h of n. So we have to know what h is uh, to give us uh, before we can compute this, but that's really what defines the linear time invariant system. Okay, so we can also do one other thing, and that is I'm going to do a different color just because I can. Let's let m equal n minus k, and then naturally. Um, k is equal to n minus m accordingly. So now if we take our convolution equation, and I'm just going to, up till now I haven't put in the limits, but it ranges over all time. Well, what happens if the signal doesn't range over all time? Well then the signal would be zero outside of its region of support and, and uh, we could change the um, limits accordingly. But this is a general case. If we do our substitution now that we just set up, when k ranges from minus infinity to infinity, then so will m. Now if we were doing an integral, because k shows up, uh, m is a function of negative k, we would have flipped the uh, the sign or had to flip things around. But since we're just doing sums, we don't have to do that. So x, where we used to have a k, we now put n minus m, and now we do h of m. So that shows us that um, also y of n is equal to h of n convolved with x of n. In other words, convolution is commutative. So there, we've got convolution down. So now, let's look at some, uh, one other way of visualizing this to see what's going on. First off, we uh, originally defined our system by saying it was an LTI system T. But once we have h of n, we often define the system just by putting h of n in the box. So this is our LTI system. And furthermore, uh, h has a name. h of n is the impulse response of our LTI system. Is it possible to have impulse responses of non-LTI systems? Kind of. If you have one of a time varying, or rather a not time invariant system, then the H of n has a second input. And that would be the time at which uh, it was found. So H of n would change depending on when it started. So it would look like a H of n comma comma h of n comma comma m. Um, if it's not linear, then the impulse response really doesn't make any sense and isn't very useful. Uh, but for an LTI system, the impulse response 
completely characterizes the system. So once you have h of n, uh, you know everything about the system, as long as you know it's uh, um, time invariant. OK, so what's going on here with the convolution equation? Let's go back and look at what this is. Looking at this right here. This lends an interpretation to us. It says that we can take um, our sequence of impulses, which are different heights, and make up our x. Then we put it into the system. At k equals 0, that's the very first sample. So that's our uh, if, I'll draw it down here. Let's say our x of n look like that. 0, 1, 2, with an amplitude of 2, minus 1, and 1. So x of 0, in this case, is going to be 2. When we put an impulse scaled to 2 into our system, we get h of n out. So let's say h of n looks like that. So that's h of n. Uh, and it's actually 2 times h of n. So it starts there, 1, 2. Now we're going to. Uh, get the next impulse into the system. This next impulse is delayed by 1 and scaled to negative 1. So what's that going to be? That's going to give us this value and then minus 1 times that will give us this value. I'm going to put it right next to it. And then finally our last value is going to be half of that. But, oh, it's negative. I'm sorry, I did that wrong. Negative, negative. So, and finally, our third value is going to give us h of n just scaled by 1, and it's going to be here. So it'll be there, there, there. Now, the total output is going to be the sum of all of those. So we're going to add up each overlapping output sample. And we would get something here that has this value of 4 is our initial output. The next two cancel. So that's going to be 0 at time 1. And then we have a 1, a minus 1, and a plus 2. So that will be a plus 2. And then we have a 1 and a minus 1 half. And finally, we have 1 half. So this would be our output. Now if we look back at our equation, we can see it right above. We have essentially scaled each, or delayed and scaled each impulse response by the corresponding signal value. And then we've summed them up. And that gives us our output. So that's one way of visualizing what's going on with the uh, convolution equation. So.
In the next uh, lecture, we'll talk a little bit about implementing convolution. Till then, enjoy.